The paint's crazy. The sharpness of the paint, you know, it really does. Look at that, dude. Damn. It's crazy, man. Oh my gosh, <laughs> like, bro. It literally looks inf infinite. Dude, look how close we got. Yeah. Damn. Hey everyone, welcome to Pixel Peeping. This is the show where we get to take a closer look at some standout digital artwork with the artists that created them. I just wanted to pop in really quick at the front of this app and say some technical difficulties happened uh, during the recording. I got to salvage it, but so my end of the stuff is gonna be like low quality and the audio is not great. I'm sorry about that, but I don't think it takes away from it. Really, we get to see Tom and all his pretty glory. And uh, you know, this is really about him and what he's talking about. So I don't think it's a big deal, but I wanted to pop in and say that I like to make things as high quality as possible, but this is just how it came down. So yeah, today's episode, we're going to talk to Tom Newbery, awesome digital artist. I've been a fan of his for a long time, and he's worked on some of the biggest stuff out there. Like he's worked on Alita Battle Angel, the movie. He's worked on some Game of Thrones. Uh, he's worked at some of the biggest studios in the world, Weta VFX. He's worked at uh, Blur and now ILM in Australia. So really great for an artist of his caliber to lend us his time. And uh, we get to discuss some of his personal work and some of the things he's carried over from production. So really great to be able to sit down and have a chat with him and kind of nerd out a little bit and ask him some questions. So please sit back and enjoy this episode with Tom Newbery. Awesome. Thanks, Jay. Really great to meet you. Yeah, dude, for sure. So um, I want to just jump right into it. Typically kind of what I would be doing is trying to talk about like one work and go as deep as possible. But, you know, we chatted before getting on here and there's uh, several of your works that I want to talk about. And uh, in chatting, I thought maybe talking about the like hyper realistic texturing and techniques that you do would be a good through line. And, and we could talk about that because you use Mari. You've said in your work, I'm totally unfamiliar with Mari. And sometimes people ask me, you know, why I don't use it. So I think I could learn a ton about that. And some of the things you're already talking about are kind of mind blowing in terms of the detail and stuff. So maybe we could just jump in uh, to a scene now, or maybe we could start off with you just kind of telling me uh, your thoughts on texturing. Can you tell me like what you think is a really good texture? What makes a good texture? Yeah, well, like the main thing that I try to focus on with my texturing is resolution. I think like the high resolution you have, the more detail you can can make and and like the better the, the higher resolution you can pull out of the textures and things like that so resolution is key to me especially like coming from a visual effects workflow where like less boundaries than there are in games and so just having high resolution textures is, is really paramount okay cool so when you're doing textures you're like thinking like how do i get max pixels and detail and kind of like yep. you know are you checking it from like a really close distance is that kind of something that you're doing too is making sure things hold up yeah so when working in production like a good way to look at it is you find out how close to camera the asset's gonna gonna get like a shot that really blew my mind in a, in a movie is like in planet of the apes they do like a crash shot on the eye of of caesar and when i saw that i was like wow they must be using some insane resolutions and so you then based on how close the camera gets to the surface you then have to work out well if this is a 4k film and the whole character's head is in frame then you've got to make sure that you have enough resolution within the UDIMs to then show up properly in, in the shot. So that's how you kind of break it down. So if it's a more of a background character, then you can reduce it and it doesn't need to be as mm -hmm. in, intense in terms of number of UDIMs. But like when it's a creature like, let's say, Godzilla and his foot gets really close to camera, that foot is going to need multiple UDIMs mm -hmm. at Probably we usually work with 4K maps. You got to know the context of the asset in the shot to know like how much resolution is going to be necessary. But when I'm doing my personal work, I just aim for as much as possible without going too crazy. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, so you have a file open right now. This is your Druid, yeah. right? Yeah, so maybe you can show like how many UDIMs are here. What's the resolution maybe to start off? People love numbers sure. and stuff. Yeah, 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 cool. So I can go to UV, the UV tab here. Mari's interface, like especially when you have something heavy in it, when you've just initially opened it, it can take a little bit of time to go between. But um, yeah, here you can see that this one's actually not as high as the demon that I did recently. Like I've started doing half a face per UDIM, mm -hmm. but here I'm doing the whole central face on one UDIM. And then this is like the scalp, the neck, the ears split onto two. 
And then we have the horns up here. And he obviously has some more gear, so I can, like, show all. And then you can oh, see oh, here. Oh, dang. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so that was this everything. is, like, no, no. Okay. So, so, like, that's the head. And then this is, like, his shoulders and back. This is, like, some leather straps wow. and stuff. And then this is fabrics and, and things like that. So I usually separate it out, like, where you've got, like, the body and the organic pieces. And then anything which is costume based, I just goes above there. So wow. Yeah. So we're running we're running a fair few here, but yeah, dude. I think this is already more pixels than I've ever I've ever done. That's pretty cool. <laughs> but but like I, I, I've I've worked on some assets where you might have a hundred. So Whoa. like th th this is still pretty low for V of a hundred, dude. But but at the same time, this is just a bust. So this only goes down. Like if I go back to orthographic. This is just to, to there. But I knew I, I'm framing him. Like, obviously, you're not seeing below, like, maybe mm -hmm. that frame. Yeah. So I didn't really worry about what's below that. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, wow, full, full characters with, like, a full-on costume. And if it's high, like a hero character, which is what we call it, um, yeah, that'll, that'll need a lot of, lot of UDIMs. Can you feel the difference working on like this asset versus one with a hundred UDIMs or is Mari just like <sighs> ripping through it? You've got to learn how to like manage your scene is the best okay. way to put it because it can get very heavy and very difficult. Like sometimes I've had to like split a character up into multiple uh, scenes. So, oh, and, and wow. I'll, I'll actually do that sometimes. Like I'll do the organic stuff in one scene file and then I'll do the costume in another one. But, but, but that, that, that's only extreme cases. Like in personal work, I can usually For sure. just, yeah, stick to this. It's fine. Okay, so really quick, just a quick aside. I noticed the eye, that you yep. have like a sclera and an iris on their own 4Ks. And so we're seeing that. Sure. Like, are you making those from scratch each time? Um, or so, projecting so, or something? Like I made this one once. Oh, I've, made, I've made a few scleras actually. I'm pretty happy with this one and it's it's done me well. So on the last few characters... I've basically just reused it. Cause... Cool. So you're like loading it in and that's what we're seeing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the iris, I usually do custom every time. I'll actually sometimes wow. go through multiple irises until I find one that, that I like. Wow. Like I'll bring one in and then I'll play with it and change it up. And then I'll be like, how's it looking in the render? And then I'll come back in and I'll try a different one. I've collected like maybe a hundred different photos of irises. And so then I just like, I just keep interchanging until I find the one that works for the character. Cause I find the eyes are like, that's the part that you connect to the most with a character. It's something that I spend a lot of time on in, in comparison to other areas of the character. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, good to know. Okay. Well, um, so yeah, I'm new to Mari. I've never even, I mean, I, I saw it a long time ago, but like I'm such a noob. So I'm seeing like there's a node, kind of a uh, view yep. down yep. here. Maybe you could break down like one of the assets if that's not too hard to just turn things off and on. Cause I don't even, yeah. like before we do that, I'll just say this, like this might help. Well, if someone asks me why I don't use Mario, I, I, I say two things really. One, you know, similar to you, but on the game side of the fence, I just use it for my job. I use substance. And yep. also I'm not doing offline renders that much. And even when I do, like I'm doing the same kind of maps and I paint them like, the base color, the roughness and normal map, all that stuff. And substance, you do that all like in one layer, if you want, you know, you sure. kind of, yeah. you're doing everything at once and you're, and you're looking at it in real time. Those are kind of my answers, but I don't even know if Mari can do some of that stuff. So like, I'm, it's funny. Cause I'm, I'm basically the opposite to you. Like I've used substance a little bit. Like I've tried to learn it like three times like i understand how it works and and i can do some basic stuff in there but if i was to like do this character in there i'd need to it'd take me a long time obviously but every time i try learn it i just run into the same thing where i'm like oh this is basically the workflow i use in mari and i already know how to use mari so i'll just stick to that basically for sure so and i've shown people uh this workflow before and they're like a substance user who's trying to move over to Mari and they're like, oh, wow, that's a similar way of how I use substance. So I'm not sure if you'll get that same feeling. Okay, not, cool. But, Let's see. Yeah. Uh, but basically, this is a template that I've come up with. I came up with it in production, basically. So I start with, a, with the same template every time. I, I developed it maybe like a year or two ago when I started really diving into nodes. Each one of these boxes 
and you you can see that these back mm -hmm. backdrops are named like this is the skin this is the horns and then i have a mask so then the iris iris mask sclera sclera mask earrings and it just goes on to every single material that i'll be using or generating yeah and so the cool thing with this workflow and this template is i can just focus on each area like region or or material of the character so yeah. if I hold down control and double click on this shader, it then uh -huh. drops me into another network. And so mm -hmm. then in this network, I have the diffuse for the skin, the metalness, which is obviously none because it's skin, mm -hmm. roughness, transmission, once again, nothing, and then displacement. So you can see all these separate uh -huh. networks. And then if I go back here, I can then go to the horns. And then once again, I have the network. So I have all of these networks separated. And the way that you need to think about it, let's say car paint, you have the bare metal underneath and then you have the car paint on top. So in this case, the skin is the bare metal. And then let's say like of like this guy actually has like face paint on it has to be you below make that its own that. material exactly mm -hmm. and so then here's paint right and so the paint needs to be above okay. the skin yeah it doesn't work like you don't want to have skin and then erase the skin to reveal the paint you want to paint the skin on the exactly. paint on top of the skin so that's and where that's the actually mask... that's actually um kind of reversed then in this view right that things underneath are actually on top yeah 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 so yeah it's a bit confusing in that way but yeah the skin is at the base and then gotcha. everything yeah you're totally right though like but then the cool thing is you can create this shader right which has all the information it needs the diffuse the specular roughness the displacement and then all you need to do is create really basic masks to yes. then mask out what regions you want the want the paint to be yeah. in. yeah so so you kind of make a paint material that has a complexity whatever you want 100%. all the attributes and then you yep. paint where that paint will go exactly cool. yeah so you can see Boom. here there's one mask i'm mm. just going to change a thing just down here just to speed up our okay. feedback here these are just bake nodes that i use to speed the scene up a bit and then this is already pretty intimidating though this node view <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 it would be, but it like I'm I, I've done a tutorial already, which is on my gumroad, about like how like I, I also give you this template, but then I show you how to build from it from scratch. So it starts off with literally just like this node mm -hmm. and these few nodes. And then I show you how to like you just keep duplicating and build yeah. and building into it basically. So there you can see the paint mask on its own. Mm -hmm. That's then controlling what comes through, and you can see the resolution here. Mm. So I want to make sure that you have like a lot of <laughs> resolution to play with because th that's what makes it look real. That's like when I see a piece someone's done, and I'm like, ah, they just needed a bit more resolution in their textures to get that sharper like fidelity, their piece would have been at the next level. So I find that to be like really, really important. So I can go back to the shader here. It should start running faster. Yeah, there we go. So it looks yeah. like we are looking at something with, yeah, with roughness and height, maybe displacement, 100%. I don't know. Yes. So I've got the displacement plugged into the bump because you can visualize Good. displacement within Mari, but it's a yeah, but what's the memory point? Yeah. killer. Yeah, it's a memory killer. So I just plug it into the bump and it gives me a really, really good understanding of how it's going to look in, yeah, the, this is in cool. the final render. So this looks good. This looks it good. took me a long time to learn how to like properly visualize my texturing within Mari. Like earlier on, I would just like, I'd do my black and white maps and I wouldn't even visualize them and I'd just spit them out to Maya and then I'd plug them into the hypershade and then I would like tweak the like the levels of it within the hypershade in Maya. But doing it in here, you can consolidate everything and you can get a look very close before you output it. And then my shaders end up being less bloated in Maya. Yeah. So like if I showed you the shader for this guy in Maya, it's literally just like plug in diffuse, plug in spec roughness, plug in displacement cool. and everything works. So... Yeah, you can have super Sick. simple shaders, but you can make sure you can consolidate everything here within Mari. And so it's interesting how my workflow is like shifted from relying more on the Mari hypershade side of things. But now yeah. I'm relying more on, on Mari and I think that's the better way to go. Awesome. So you're, you're using um, Maya and you're rendering with Arnold in Maya? When you do Correct, these? yep. This texturing stuff, I mean, I, I assume... 
you got a lot of your insights and experience like in production. Yeah. So one thing that I've like been planning to show for a while um, is how like the power of displacement, basically. So if we see this guy here, right? Mm -hmm. With with horns, horns were something that I really wanted to like come up with a way to do them. Like I started out and I'd like sculpt in ZBrush and I'd always get this result where the horn would end up being like quite lumpy and, and soft. It was hard to get like yeah. really nice crisp details, which is something that I, I always find in ZBrush. Like it's really hard to get really nice crisp details. And so something that I learned a, a, a few years ago was that you can push this stuff a, a, a long way texturally. So, f for example, here, I should probably open up the ZBrush scene, but... Oh, uh, we'd love to see that. Yeah. Okay. Th this oh, is basically wow. the model here. Wow. This is this is the model, for sure. Yep. Yeah. Wow. So, that is awesome to see. I mean, the model of the character looks great, but, like, the horns are definitely way simpler than I would have imagined. Yep. Yeah, so this is what the horns look like. This is what the skin looks like. Like I, I try to like primary wrinkles and things like that. Oh wow, yeah, even the face, yeah, even the face detail is a lot, a lot simpler. Yeah, super expect. simple. Yeah. Because when when you're doing details in ZBrush, you're limited by the resolution of the mesh. But yeah. in Mari, when you're using enough UDIMs, you're then limited by the texture, and the texture resolution is way more. You've got have way more resolution to play with than you do polygons in yeah. ZBrush, and so when I learned this, I was like, well, how can I leverage my textures to do what I want to do in ZBrush, but in Mari texturally? So yeah, this just goes to show like how basic I keep it, and I I used to do really highly detailed stuff in ZBrush, but once I learned this technique, I now avoid doing that basically so if we jump wow. back into mari here we can go to the horns and i just have to disable this uh bake node it's going to slow things down a little bit but so mm -hmm. let's just uh separate the horns mm -hmm. wow okay cool you can isolate it yeah yeah so you can isolate it Sick. and now i'm just going to go to the horn shader so i yeah. was showing you like the skin okay. before the horns are here so now it's in a tab and now we can come down here. Actually, a better way to describe this, and it'll actually make Mari run even faster, is if I just go gray shaded. So then you can see the actual, dis Sick. like what the displacement is, because I'm also baking things into the diffuse. So Yeah. Okay. You can use some information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I do a lot of swapping because like people use AO maps and stuff, but when you think about it, a displacement, the depressions are darker and the high, the higher points are lighter and so then you can just take your displacement map and then crush it mm. and then you can mask out the high points and you can mask out the low points and you can like use those masks to do whatever you want and so i i actually use displacements heavily in my like diffuse maps not not on skin but on something like these horns like i want the higher points to to like where where they've been rubbed I yep. want those to be lighter. So yeah, things like that. So now I can disable all of these. So I'm just disabling like merge nodes, which is merging like all these maps. And so once this is refreshed, you should see like nothing on it. Okay. How much of this texturing that you that you did at this horns, like with these nodes, how much of it is like texture assets and how much of it is hand painted or is is hand painting even a thing with yeah, brushes yeah, and stuff yeah it's it so it's a mix it's a mix mari also works heavily in gpu and so the fact that like we're recording yeah, and showing yeah. this it's yeah. running maybe like six times slower than it usually would. oh really so, that, so it's a so it's not just half speed like it's a big difference no it's a big difference yeah i was playing with this this morning and it was much faster so but okay so here i've got some uh, nodes i've got ridges wood so i actually when i was experimenting and like trying to detail these because as you can see this super basic this is the final mesh that you see in the render but it's got these textures applied so First, I got a um a map from Surface Mimic, and they had scans of it's like just a texture website, and they it's a an old one which doesn't get updated anymore. But they have scans of like a ram's horn, 
So I was mm-hmm. like, oh, this would be really cool to like use. And so I had to go through and like manually mm-hmm. project this on. So I kind of just like you line up the camera and you bring in your texture and then you project through onto the surface. By doing it in here, I can see how it's affecting the surface but also like you've got to imagine in your mind a little bit because it's obviously not changing the um the silhouette within mari it's just showing you bump detail i got these textures from mega scans oh no actually these ones are from um uh, textures.com and they're um it's just sand so you got to start getting creative with your textures you got to start like trying to work out like oh i want a certain detail what can i use for that so if i enable this merge node yeah so you can see here there are these lines and so actually a better way in mari to check this is just to run the opacity and so yeah you can see these ridge lines because the original one it lacked ridges and then i could have like used these further down but the spacing isn't quite right. Like as it goes down the horn, the spacing of the ridges should like sort of elongate and like grow in scale almost. It's, it seems to be higher frequency at the base of the horn. So I can add that in. It looks kind of subtle here, but once again, this is a, I'd consider oh, yeah. this a low frequency displacement. And so okay. it actually really influences the silhouette of the horn the silhouette, once yeah. we start rendering it. So you've got to, you got to kind of imagine it. And if, if, like at every step of this process, I'm baking this out, I'm rendering it in Maya and I'm going like, oh, okay, yeah, I think that's doing what I what I want it to. Okay. Or I'm like, oh, that's not quite right. Let's go back in, change this, rebake, hit render, check it again. And then I was like, okay, we're I think we're almost there, but I was rendering it and like areas were looking a bit too smooth, a bit too, like there wasn't enough information there. And so then... I got this wood tile. I think this one's also off textures.com. And then if I enable that one, you can Mm -hmm. see it then adds Mm -hmm. all this really nice- Super sharp. Sort of sharp, really sharp. And and it it ages them. Like I was looking up references of ram horns and getting this, like like it's starting to get soft here. But in ZBrush, even if I took this texture right now and imported it into ZBrush, which is something something that people love to do. But what actually happens is you then- Lose degrade, a yeah, yeah. You degrade the texture. You lose a bunch of resolution, a bunch, all, all that really nice crisp detail. Yeah, you can see here. Yeah, I mean that's great. I mean, yeah, the horn. You like, can see like, the sharp detail towards the tips. Yep. So yeah, you can see all this sharp detail, and then all of this detail oh, yeah, that's, that's all sand. coming from the texture. Uh, yeah, yeah. So so that's the sand there, and then that's the ram's horn projected, and like these lines yeah. here are from the wood. And sure. so I've also had to make sure that when I was creating these horns, that when I was doing the UVs, mm-hmm. that they're in a, a oh, vertical. Yeah, vertical. That, that, so then it's easy. Like all I need to do is slap on the wood shader. So, Are you like tiling that to get the scale? Yeah, exactly. So this node is a tiled node and I'm doing it three by three. And so then, yeah, you can see here, then that's going to perfectly flow with the with the form of the horn. So otherwise, if I hadn't done my UVs in this way, I'd have to go through and painstakingly manually project it, which is what I had to do for the ram textures because yeah. obviously the ram horn texture, it was already in a hook shape. And so then I had to go through and manually like project that meticulously. So that that takes a lot of time. But to do this one, very quick. This this took yeah. me like a couple of minutes, really. That gives you a good idea of like how how much you can achieve in textures. And and it, it's a technique which I don't think many people use, but I think it's a super powerful method. Yeah, I just see a lot of horns that people do on their characters and and you can tell that they sculpted it in ZBrush and I'm just like, "Oh, it just looks soft and it just yeah. It it just doesn't have have that crispness." And and this way it's fully non-destructive. Like in ZBrush, like yeah, yeah, you can use layers and stuff, but then layers are also problematic in ZBrush. Whereas in this, I can just lay stuff. That, yeah, it's good to go and I can erase it where I don't want it. I can reduce the intensity so like super easily i can go in here to where the wood is coming in in the merge node and so we can come in here and i just run this opacity down and look i can be like oh i want a little less like that that actually looks pretty nice like that's actually (laughs) quite noisy but maybe maybe that would have looked better so i didn't test that but that could have looked better so (laughs) i feel like you're actually yeah you're actually iterating right now like you would be doing yeah 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 
So can you over crank it too? Can you say like, I want this to be stronger? So that, that was at max. But if you wanted more, like, are you limited by the texture or, or do you run nodes? You can go into grade and then you can multiply up. Yeah. So then that's molting it. But you, usually if I want something stronger, I'll bring all, all the other elements down and then I'll have that cranked higher. That, that's oh, I see. And then, how and then I you actually it. just use the displacement strength. Yeah. Yeah. In the render. Yeah. For gotcha. sure. You know, maybe it's obvious, but just to hammer the point home, you know, like what you're saying about your using displacement now for detail is because in ZBrush, you're limited by polygons, which become pixels. And in texture, you're just going straight to pixels and you can yep. use so many more pixels than you can polygons. A hundred, like, like 10 like a times. a lot more. Yeah, yeah. Way, way more. Yeah. I mean, I've made a couple horns and, um. There is something about them with their shape that you need a very, very, very dense mesh to be able to get the kind of details that, like, you know, that you would wish to have, like the, the stuff you have in your character. Like it would be yeah. really slow. Um, yeah. Really quick. Sorry. I just, I, you know, I have a thing about skin too. So how the paint's crazy. The sharpness of the paint. Yeah. It really does. You know, <laughs> it really does. Look at that, dude. Damn. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. Dude, look how close we got. Yeah. Damn. Oh, yeah, so the skin, um, so yeah, we saw the um, the sculpt is just those, you know, hero wrinkles and stuff, secondary stuff, yeah. and all tertiary detail is done in uh, Mari. How is that done? Is it projection I, 100%? I, I use texturing XYZ maps. These, like, they've got V-Face now, but for, for this one, I used a multi-map pack where you, like, mm -hmm. you, you kind of just... You project basically like the circle of the face. So like from the base of the chin to the edge of the ear to the top of the scalp sort of thing. And then the rest of the information you kind of got to fill in. So I like usually fill it in with tileables and, and things like that. So, but you can get some really nice results from that. So Surface Mimic has some great tileables. I also create some based on the XYZ maps like I'll like grab a crop of the cheek and then use that somewhere else potentially. And I'll manually in Photoshop, like turn it into a tileable texture. I, I notice there's like a trend sometimes where people are like, oh yeah, I would want to do every single pour, but skin, well, first of all, when I'm doing my personal work, I have, I have limited time for my personal work. So I want to get the best result in the shortest amount of time. And so by using that, it's, it, it just helps me like push it along. But also, I find skin is just so complex. If you look at the the flows oh, yeah. and things like that, what? just the the nuances, it's it's insane. So if if I want to get the best result possible, and also if I was at a job wow. and I needed to do this ca character in a film, this yeah. is the technique I'd be using. Yeah. So yeah, you're you're also like honing the skills and muscles that you need to for your job. Yeah. Yeah. And you're playing around with them for fun. Yeah. And then this is like specks of dirt on the skin and like yeah i was looking skin. at that wow yeah yeah it's it's and and it's things like this which is what takes the work to the next level like what once i learned that this was what it is like and i started doing that like it just changed how i how i worked and and yeah. and how i approached my work as well i guess yeah it's kind of uh, surprising to see that detail in the paint and then even the skin, like how close you're getting, but like the sharpness and the paint, I'm even kind of surprised that it, that it's even just a 4K. Oh, okay, okay. So, so something I must mention is currently we're not looking at this baked. So, okay, the, this is actually tileables. So that that's why it looks okay. infinite right okay. now. Yeah. Oh my gosh, <laughs> like, bro! It literally looks inf infinite because it's wow. a tileable. But if I okay. bake this out at 8K, it's still going to retain. Yeah, most 8K. Of that. Would, yeah, but what? Okay, so what resolution did you bake your display? I, I, I bake render? them. I bake them out in 8K. So, okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Like, okay, like so when I saw the UV, when I saw the UDIMs right here, it was saying 4K. I thought that was the resolution. So it's saying that because to make my scene work faster, I'm pre-baking these at a at a 4K resolution. And so, so what, what it's taking is, is it's taking that whole pipeline of textures and complicated maps and stuff. And it's just like, just temporarily baking it out at that level. But then this is my channel and I'm baking, say this roughness out at 8K 16 bit. So okay. that's, that's what, I, but I'm previewing in 4K 
just to like, so I'll bake these out. So if I'm working on my diffuse, but I still want to see my displacement and I don't want the scene to be really sluggish, I'll, I'll plug in the bake. So, so at the moment we have the disc plugged in directly, but yeah, the bake nodes are plugged in for the, well, for the roughness and for the diffuse, we're only looking at the gray for now. So, but yeah, wow. that, that, that's why it looks insanely detailed because th- th- this that is, is sick, so, though. So, so when I was saying you need to be creative with the textures that yeah. you're using, this is a like a rocky path. So, yeah, yeah. And because like when you get like, really close. But. Yeah, and, and like when you think of paint, like especially like this sort of paint that I was going for, like primitive very type. like primitive style paint, like very dirty, dusty paint. Like they ground it like, up from something. Exactly, 100%. Yeah, so that, that, that's what I was going for. And so then I was like, oh, I need to add in these little hits of that, that can like pick up specular and stuff like that. So yeah, it's pretty ah, nice. That's sick. So, so j- just as an example, like that bake node was 4K, but I can plug that in right now and we can just see. Okay. Let's wait for it to update. There you go. So if it was 4K, mm. that's how much resolution you'd get. But if it was 8K, you'd get four times that resolution. Yeah. It actually does a good job of, um, doesn't, just look like a crunch maybe it is but it looks like it's like kind of smart about it yeah you know it's not just turning into like noisy chatter like yeah bits yeah it actually looked like it was authored at 4k that's cool wow awesome dude uh yeah it looks amazing so another thing that i wanted to show was i worked out how to like sculpt in in mari yeah so when doing fine wrinkles and things like that like on my chimpanzee piece i um is struggling to get the really nice sharp wrinkles on the face of the chimp and so i was like oh maybe i can create a brush in mari which like allows me to get the sort of sharp crisp details i want but i i sculpt them directly in here so what i was trying to do is i was trying to create a um basically a damn standard brush so An infinite now can... resolution damn standard brush. yeah yeah pretty much so now i can go into skin and then i can go to my displacement of the skin Mm -hmm. And then you've got wrinkles here. And so I'm merging this in and I can just show you here now. I've already reduced the intensity here. So you can see, oh, oh, wait, I'm on a bake node one moment. So if I Mm -hmm. jump back out, let's just throw in the gray just to speed things up again like we did before. And then we'll throw in the displacement into the bump. So we're not running. So once you run through the bake node, it'll block you. So any changes you do, that's all baked down. So... Now we can go back to skin shader. So what we saw before was uh, kind of a preview bake, and now we're looking at the raw. So yeah, I've just viewport. baked down all the information so Murray can run faster, basically. Okay. Um, and then so, but, but we'll see our changes live. Not not before, but now that I've s- switched back off the bake node, now now we'll see any updates we make live. So here you have a slider and then an, well like th- this is just showing like the work that i've done and so this is a level of wrinkling which i didn't think i could achieve in zbrush well like i i attempted to but i just couldn't get it crisp enough by running this intensity slider you can see with so with the wrinkles off and with them on and so i've set them to about 50% because i thought it was a bit too heavy handed just to show you in action yeah what this allows you to do is to see the sculpting of the wrinkles live. It's kind of, it's it's like you're sculpting tertiary details within Mari. Yeah, I just oh, really wanted to show yeah, this because it's it's something that I oh. I worked out like a little while ago on the chimpanzee piece, basically. And, yeah, that yeah. has a ton of wrinkles. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, you, you can just, you can go to town. You can make the brush bigger and it'll make like broader wrinkles. You can make it tighter and it'll make it tighter wrinkles. So... Yeah, it's, it's kind of changed the way that I look at um, texturing now. So basically all tertiary details, I, I do them in, in Mari. That makes sense. Wow. That's cool to see. Definitely um, so much more weighted. Your process is so much more weighted, you know, in the texturing phase yeah. and works yeah. in tandem. So you're really just getting that structure uh, in ZBrush. Are you iterating on that? Like, since it's almost like this handoff, you know, are you ever in rendering in Arnold and think like, I want to emphasize a shape or add a, add something in ZBrush and go back to that, go all the way back De- there? Or, no, or- de- definitely, definitely. I'm always, and and like that, that's the cool part about personal projects is you can be like, oh, I like the horns are not the shape that I want them to be. But because... 
because like you've already got your UVs baked in, you've got everything set up. All I need to do is just jump in, change the horns, hit render, and the horns will still render as well as they did before. They've just like you've moved yeah. their, their position. So I'm never like, oh, I've finished modeling. Okay, now on to texturing. I, I get the model to a place, but I always mean to come back. Like, for example, on this guy, the pro, like secondary structures around the eye were not quite there. And I knew that going into texturing. And then I started doing the texturing and re- and then I started rendering it. And I was like, ah, oh, they're not, yeah, they're not looking how I want them to. And so I got some more references up, jump back in, and then I, I refined them further. And so I I, I got a, a look that I was more pleased with. Yeah. Sweet. This is a good pitch for Mari too, for anyone that's interested. Uh, we <laughs> chatted about this before, about how like, obviously it's using productions like, you know, for the real stuff. And you can see why. There is a version that you could use you know, kind of at home, right? That's more reasonably yeah. priced, right? This non-commercial. Yeah, there's a non-commercial version. the The maximum resolution you can use is 4K. Is there it, a limit on on UDIMs? Because you could do a lot of UDIMs, right? That, so, so the limit is six. Which, like, okay. when I think about it, that's pretty good. Like, that's pretty good. Because the druid, his face was on one, and then his neck and like the beginning of his shoulders was was on um another two so that, that that's only three udims and you've already got the head and then the horns on another one and then you can do the eyes in a separate scene like they don't have to be in the same scene i actually like this guy's teeth they were textured in a, in another scene so yeah so, so you can split up scenes and then work that way as well but 4k is usually what we output in production anyway so the fact that yeah. that's the maximum it's not it, it it's a pretty good for a non-commercial version of a of a software, oh, it's yeah. a pretty good one. Yeah, absolutely. For portfolios and everything, yeah, totally, and yeah, obviously definitely. just learning the software. I mean, if you know, you could do great work, and then if you ever wanted to upgrade, but I yeah, mean, hundred percent. I, I personally love that stuff too. Like just being able to use, like I got Nuke just to use a little bit. Yep. Just because it's used <laughs> on the movies that I love, so like you know, being yeah. able to texture with Mari and uh, and know that that's what they use for the real stuff and anything that you are a fan of, really. Yeah, definitely. They used Mari. Well, cool, dude. Um, really quick, you mind um chatting to me a little bit about how you pick your projects? You know, um, they take so much time. Obviously, they're personal. Sometimes people too have like I don't know if the, if it's an indecision or maybe they got too many things they want to do. But looking over your you know your portfolio, like I said at the beginning, I've been a big fan, and I also feel like there's something a little bit akin with me because there's some kind of like classic film character inspiration kind of thing you know mixed with some other yeah. stuff so yeah if you could what what do you think about and how do you choose like your next project how do you know like this is the one i'm going to dedicate a lot of time to? um so like if we look at my portfolio so sometimes for example the druid the druid mm-hmm. is it's not based on any well actually i found a really like rough like sketch slash painting that someone had done and that kind of like triggered an idea in my mind and and i really wanted to do a character with horns and now i've done two and because I, I, I was already building up in my mind, like that workflow of achieving that higher level of detail in the horns. And, and I wanted to put that to practice. So but a lot of the time I actually like, yeah, I find a piece of concept art, like the house elf was a uh, piece done by Rob Bliss. He's the guy who actually designed Dobby for the Harry Potter movies. And he okay, had this yeah. really rough sketch that he posted on Instagram and I could just see like so much energy in the character and like I I could already see visually in my mind how it could look and so I just wanted to generate that in my style and it's now one of my favorite pieces the the orc was just a piece that I everyone's got to do an orc I think yeah yeah exactly I was just like oh I want to do my version of an orc but I like looked at the anatomy of like a gorilla's teeth and Mm -hmm. I was like that makes more sense to me than like the way Blizzard does it with these big, huge, yeah. like, tusks just jutting out of the bottom lip. So, yeah, I wanted to integrate, like, gorilla anatomy and then, like, give him this, like, really solid forehead, wide cheekbones like a lion. But, yeah, a lot of the time it's just I, I just get an idea or it's um, I see a piece of concept art. So this is another one. Brad um, Rigney. Yeah, Brad Rigney. That's based on his. And, and then um, the albino demon as well from um vetamora yeah so as soon as i saw this piece by vetamora i was like i i really want to do this one and so i i had it on the back burner for ages cool. i finally jumped on it and 
Actually, my so next... So do you have kind of a list now? I have a Pure F folder and, and oh. one... I've got one for like anatomy and then I've got it all like segmented out like back anatomy, chest anatomy, arms, like all that. And then I've got another one and it's just called Inspiration. And so what I do is I, I've been collecting images online for like probably going on, like getting close to 15 years. So I have like, I don't know. Wow. Last time I checked, it was 50,000. I probably have 70,000 images Whoa, now. Oh, what? Um, How do you and look and, through all that? And they're all, they're all heavily categorized. So okay. like if I go here, I can go to Ooh, pictures. Yeah. So I can go 2D, 3D, artists. I don't really do artists anymore because I don't like to like, I like to put things in their places. Photography. So we can go photography. And then we can be like, okay, what do we got? We got bikes, architecture, animals, environments. Then we can go animals. Then we have like just anything here. Wow. And then we could go ape. And then we can go chimpanzee. And then you got baby, okay. eyes, hairless, okay. hands, old, scream. And then you can go screaming. So do you, do you, you reference your library first, right? It seems like. You don't yeah. go to Google first? I'll, yeah, I'll reference my library first because I know I've found those images specifically and I've, I've added them to my collection if they if it like sings to me sort of thing but sometimes like when i did the chimpanzee i really did a deep dive because I, I was looking for like an adolescent chimpanzee but then i also like just find ones which i can also add just add to my collection as well like getting the eyes right like i was looking yeah. at these and i was like oh okay so this guy has like really dark scleras and then like really nice orange saturated irises. And I thought that was re a really cool look. And so I leveraged off that. And then also like you have all the, the wrinkles, wrinkle detail. Yeah. And just like my texturing, I like to find really high res detailed mm -hmm. images. So I, I really look out for, for that sort of um, reference. And I just have an insane amount. And so then I'll go through, like if I go back through all of them and then go to 2D, and then I've got a few here and then I got creatures and then these are all different types of creatures and then I'll go busts and then these are heaps and heaps of busts that I've like oh. just collected and then I'll like grab one like I really like this one so yeah. like maybe maybe I'll sculpt him yeah. yeah and so I then put the ones that I really like into a pure ref and then I just if I'm like stuck and I'm like oh what should I do I just jump in there and it's and the pure ref's probably like three four years old now and so i can go back and be like oh i remember this piece like oh i'd love to tackle that now and then i'll like pick that up so mm -hmm. it's or it, in, in the pure f i also have like pictures of animals and things like that because i'll see like an animal there's this very specific monkey but yeah this guy here mm -hmm. i just i can see him like like you using the face like like not 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 recreating it yeah. like i did the chimp but using the face on like, let's say an ogre or something like that. Okay, and when they yeah. open their mouth, they have this really interesting like dentures, like like mm -hmm. de dental, like like big tusks, kind of like an orc a little bit. Yeah. So yeah, I'll just find guys like this. And I love their like ears and how they're like pushed back. And also their mm -hmm. hair, like they almost have a mane. So like just getting <laughs> inspiration from animals as well. That's like, like this one's great. Yeah, it's really fantastic. It's really cool to see the, your your collection, yeah, uh, organized like that. And yeah, that's that's awesome. A, a really important important note that I think it took me a little while to learn, but like well, once I was confident in um in the skills that I had, and I think every artist goes through this, but I used to have trouble like finishing a project. And something that would happen frequently is I'd start on something and then I'd see a new piece of concept art or I'd come up with a new idea for a character. And then I'd be like, oh, I can put this to the side and then I'll like start working on that and I'd start working on that one and I would never go back to the other one. But something that I've like trained myself to do is you just stick to the one project until it is done. And then because you'll always have this curve of like, in the beginning, I'm, I'm, I'm like just on a high. I'm like, oh, yeah. this is awesome. Like this is looking great. This is looking awesome. 
and then you, I'll get sick of it, and I'll be like, oh, and it'll, I'll have to like drag myself to the computer to like keep pushing it, and I'm like, oh god, like, uh. and then it'll start like all coming together, and then it'll it'll be on an up and up, and I'll just be like, oh sweet, and I'll be waking up early and just to like do some more work on it. So I always have this sort of like bell curve, well inverted bell curve, like. I love yeah. well, yeah, I love it, and then I don't, and then I'm I love it again. So, and I think a lot of artists go through that. Yeah, I I can super relate. That was a good way to say it for sure, <clears throat> especially towards the end when it's actually, you know, the middle. I think, like you say, the bell curve. The middle can be the slog where it doesn't look that great. The oh, end yeah. isn't clear. You've got a lot of work to do. You're not sure what to do. So the that's the most uncomfortable part. But then the closer you get to the end and you see the light at the end of the tunnel, yeah, that for me that's yep. the most exciting. It's like then it's almost hard to put down. You just yeah. feel like you oh, can just yeah. do these little it already looks cool and then maybe yep. I just do a little thing. Oh, that looks cool too. You know, do, 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 you know. <laughs> yeah. I, I was I was like halfway through doing the renders for this guy. I no, I was at the beginning. So like I, I did this render initially. So you oh, can great. see is this I your have, first one? This was the first render, yeah. So awesome. I just set up a studio light rig. You can see like once again no tertiary details because I haven't jumped into texturing yet. But then I was like I started adding textures and layering things up. And I mm. got to like this point and I almost threw yeah. the towel in. I was almost like I'm not liking anything about this really. It feels like it was the closest I've ever gotten to being like, uh, oh, nah, I'm not gonna like I'm I'm just gonna start something new. But I wow. persevered and I like kept going. What was it? Do you remember the thing? Do you do you remember <laughs> Did you have I, did you have an idea of like, oh, you know what it needs is this, or did you just kind of blindly walk forward until it stopped? Yeah, I think I, I did this render and then I did this render and I showed my yeah, girlfriend. You, yeah. And I was like I was like, oh, I quite like this one. Like it, it has like, it just shows off the details nicely and things like that. <laughs> and then, and then you've got this one and like, yeah, th this one matches the concept closer. And my girlfriend was like, what are you talking about? This one's way better. And I was like, yeah. I don't know. Like, and I look at it now and that's how I yeah, feel as well. I'm like, I'm like, what the hell was I? She was like, this just looks <laughs> like a guy in a cafe. She was like, this looks dumb. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so so then I was like, oh, maybe maybe it is. And then this grew on me and then I just kept working yeah. on it and then that's yeah, cool. just kept developing it. But you can see here like the structure of the eye wasn't quite there in terms of like the initial sculpt. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I kept that this is updated in this one. But I got to this point and I was like, oh, okay, now we're getting somewhere. Yeah, now we get somewhere. And then I, I just continued developing it. I played with different backgrounds because like in the original concept, it has a very like, bit of a gradient from light to dark okay. on the background like this um yeah it works well with the dark background i think just because he's kind of like exactly. a dark character yeah and it makes him pop more he's like in a cave yeah. so yeah yeah it doesn't work for every character but it looks good it looks finished still and then and then the funny thing is i did these gray shaded renders and i was like yeah. oh, i feel like these look better than the final render maybe i'll just post this <laughs> <laughs> but, i i don't i don't agree but i think they show the detail way better they do yeah exactly you know yeah and when you've put in all the tell. time and stuff yeah like and and once yeah. again just because like the topic of this um chat look is at the, the textures yeah. yeah these horns are exactly the same like if, if i go back to the very first one these horns did not change from here wow. to here those are the yeah, exact same crazy. horns and this detail is displacement you, and subsurface scattering none yeah, of that I was is about diffuse. to say dude there's no base color in here there's no base color zero wow yeah that so, is that is it's insane. a pretty that's insane it's crazy that's insane so would so, you say that the displacement map is is the most important texture for you it is i think it's overlooked by so many people it's overlooked. and and people don't i don't i don't think people understand how powerful it is and once you like it takes a long time to like it took me ages to like really like to wield it in the way that I, I wanted to do you, once you work it out, it is nuts. It, like, I, I feel like it, it's, it's, it's a, it, it, it levels you up basically. So yeah. Yeah. Displacement it's, underrated. Yeah. You and, 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 and I, and I use it, I use it in the specular roughness map and I also use it in the diffuse map. So yeah, it's the most important aspect to my whole process without it. My work would like it it wouldn't look as no, nowhere near as good in my opinion yeah it's so cool to see 
um, this displacement stuff like that. The horns, I mean, it's just crazy, you know, because it yeah. it has values and everything. And to see the simple mesh, that's a yep. good testament right there. Cool. Is all the hair uh, that you did on this and the Druid, is that all X-Gen stuff? Yeah, it's X-Gen. With the... Yeah, yeah. I, I just stick to X-Gen for my um personal work. It took me a long time to learn, so I'm just like, oh, I'll stick with it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it comes with my, uh, you know. My yeah, yeah, exactly. Awesome, man. Well, incredible stuff. Thank you for walking me through that and uh, seeing the Mari process and everything. Uh, it's definitely alluring. Man, I've never used it, but you make me uh, want to try it. Definitely <laughs> some of this texture stuff. I mean, the the infinite zoom. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> the right? infinite zoom. Yeah. Yeah, dude, yeah. it's awesome. So, you know, you mentioned it before, but you do have a Gumroad page for people that don't know. And uh, you have some tutorials where, like you talk about, Mari, you walk through some of your projects. You can speak a little bit about it, but they're like long form and go into big detail. And you really share like the development of a work from start to finish, right? Yeah, so I've got a bunch of tutorials. Like some of them are outdated now. If you grab some of the more recent ones, it should have like, I, I, I feel like they have really good information. I need to do a new one on organic uh, texturing because the latest tutorial, which is uh, a Mad Max car, I, I used th this sort of like texturing technique to, to texture that vehicle. It's not an organic asset but it is like the techniques that I use to create this are exactly the same as the ones I would use to create an organic asset. And the only reason why I did a car instead of an organic character is because an organic character takes a lot more time. Like I, I textured this in eight, eight hours, which is like a, oh, wow. like a, a work day. I, I do plan to bring out another one where I do my node based workflow with my template um, on an organic character. Um, uh, yeah, so keep keep an eye out for that. When I get some time, I'll jump onto it. But yeah, for now, this is a great one. Um, yeah, I've got an eye tutorial on there. Um, and yeah, some other ones. Uh, Barbarian. I There was a Barbarian that I yeah. did. Um, and, and it goes through every single aspect apart from modeling. So texturing, look dev, um, uh, X-Gen, every single bit of xgen you see here i go through meticulously every step of the process so if you want to learn xgen or or any of that sort of stuff then yeah it's it's great for that but back back when i did this guy i i didn't i didn't have a node-based workflow going in mari yet um so yeah it's it's using layers which i don't recommend after using nodes nodes are definitely the way to go in mari so okay yeah. cool awesome man well thank you again dude um really eye-opening it's so cool to see uh behind the scenes of your work i love i love seeing the files like that seeing the zbrush was cool and yeah and your organization directories and stuff thanks man yeah man super super cool like awesome. i said been a fan of your work for a long time so really cool to be able to sit down and chat about it yeah no it's great great to chat to you as well i've been i've been a fan of your work for for a good while now as well thanks dude all right well that's it everyone thank you for tuning in definitely check out his work if you haven't and uh his gumroad page that's it for this episode and see you guys in the next video. Peace out. See ya.